Hi guys, it's Michael G0POT here and today I'd like to do a short review of the Soda Beams PowerPole Fused DC Connection Box or aka the Fuser 6. Now this is a 6-way 12-volt distribution unit using the Anderson Power Poles. If you're not sure what Anderson Power Poles are, firstly, where have you been for the last year and a half? But secondly, let me give you a very quick uh, preview. Um, here I have a, a battery with a set of power poles on. Now these are um, sockets and plugs. Uh, they're the same thing basically. So both socket and plug. Um, they come as individual units. This are um, in different colours. So basically what I've done is had a, a red and a black one and stuck them together here. They clip together and in fact you can make arrays as long as you like. So uh, but ideal for, for power. Um, my battery has a 30 amp version attached and the power lead for my radio has 15 amp version attached. But physically they're exactly the same. It's just the size of the metal contacts inside that is different. Um, and basically these just push together, they look identical, but they just push together to form a really good electrical connection. And the great thing with these is you, if you fit them to everything, and two years ago I'd, I'd never even heard of them, wasn't really a convert, started using them and realised just how effective it is. By fitting power poles to everything, I can now interconnect different things. So I have them in my car, in my house. Um, on all my batteries so that I can connect any radio to any battery or power supply. Um, I also have things like uh, extension power cables with them on either end so that I can have short power cables, long power cables, especially when I'm operating on a hilltop using a battery and I might want to keep things very short and tight or I might want to sit on a chair and actually have the battery on the floor. So absolutely brilliant for connecting um, batteries and uh, shack power supplies to your radio equipment. So the Fuser 6 or power pole fuse distribution unit has six ways, so six sockets. Strictly speaking one of them is an input and five of them are outputs. So if you have a battery or a shack supply with Anderson power poles you can plug them into one of the sockets and then have five outputs. Um, but I think you can also customise the unit by drilling a hole in one end, putting a, a couple of cables in, a couple of tails, so that you can connect it to your shack supply, whatever that might be, um, 12 volt supply, to supply the unit and then you have six fused outputs. It uses the automotive blade uh, fuses, so you have a range of current ratings that you can, uh, can use with it. And also it has um, reverse polarity indication, I believe. So we'll see that once I've got it built. I've got the kit form here because I want to have a go at building it, see what it's like. Um, so I'm going to put that together in a moment and, um, and report back and see what we think. Now, um, Richard from uh, Soda Beams does a couple of other similar units to this. Um, he does, a, 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 I think, a, a small full pole um, distribution unit but that's unfused but he also does the three pole now I think this is called the phone pole mini so it's a three-way uh, Anderson power pole um, distribution so battery in on one and it gives you two sockets out but it also has a lovely 5 volt USB charging point here um, it's super lightweight I use this when I'm on a mountain top uh, very handy if you want to power up more than one thing from your battery so if you have um, a, a automated ATU or a second rig or um, something that requires a lamp or a little light to, to attach to this. But the phone charger has been a lifesaver on a couple of occasions. Um, I think it's limited to roughly 500 milliamps. So it's, it's not going to um, be able to pack a huge punch. It's not going to be able to charge a, a massive tablet. Um, but certainly if the screen's not on, it's, uh, it's been charging my iPhone without any problems at all. It's a little warm, but not ridiculously hot. Um, so yeah, that's, that's really effective when you're on a, 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 a hilltop. And especially in these modern times where we use our smartphones um, probably as a GPS to, um, to know where we are. I have Ordnance Survey maps loaded on mine so that I can use that to find myself to, my way to the summit. 
Um, obviously, you can use the phone for logging as well. That's that's quite popular. And I also use my phone for spotting myself. So if I have a data connection, um, I simply use the uh, web browser to spot myself. If I don't, if I've just got a uh, basic um, 2G, 3G connection, uh, I can send a text to, to spot myself. So, But having the um, backup of having a, a power supply on here so I can just give my phone a little boost has been really, really handy. So I love the small um, phone pole mini three-way distribution unit. Um, however, I've been using it in the shack a lot to power a couple of radios. I have my HF set and a VHF set um, set up permanently and my SWR meter has a lamp in it which is uh, powered using uh, with a power pole connector as well. So I was keen to have something a little bit more robust and a bit more permanent for the shack. So I'm going to have a go building um, Richard's uh, six-way uh, unit here and I shall report back on how easy it is to build and how good it is in action. So I have the kit version of the Fuser 6 and it comes with an enclosure and as you can see it ships it, all the parts ship inside the enclosure itself. Opening it up we see all the bits of the kit. We have the PCB, the circuit board. We have a bag of Anderson power poles. We have a bag of fuses and fuse sockets. We have a bag containing uh, nylon spacers. Uh, we have a bag containing the screws and fittings for the box and we also have a bag with the resistor and the LED in it for the reverse polarity indicator. So starting to build the kit then we take the PCB and if you look in the middle you can see the resistor and bi-directional LED indicated and the bi-directional LED essentially if you pass current through one direction you get one colour if you pass it through the other direction you get another colour. So with the voltage applied in the correct manner our LED will show a green light and in reverse polarity it'll show a red light. Note that the soldering positions for the resistor are very close to the very large pads that you solder the uh, fuse connectors to, the fuse sockets. Um, not a problem when you're installing the resistor but be very careful when you're uh, fitting the fuse sockets um, and applying a lot of heat and a lot of solder to the big pads because it's very easy to short those across. Otherwise, this is very simple procedure to add the resistor and the bi-directional LED, the polarity of which is shown correctly on the version 1.a boards. The next thing we're going to do is add the fuses and what we need to do is solder in these fuse sockets which are large, very thick metal and they're going to absorb a lot of heat so we're going to have to use a decent sized soldering iron. Richard recommends at least a 50 watt soldering iron and uh, I used uh, something in that range but found that my shack was so cold, uh, it being the winter here, um, and an uh, average temperature of about 5 degrees, I still struggled to maintain enough heat in the soldering iron um, to solder these effectively. So I ended up using a 100 watt soldering iron but being very careful not to apply it for too long. So to solder the fuse sockets in place, first of all you pop the sockets onto the fuses. They're going to hold them in the right orientation and the right position. Make sure they're all on the same way round. And then you can line them up on the board, turn the board upside down and slowly solder each one in place. I kept moving from one end to the other just to distribute the, the heat and not to uh, heat the board up too much. Here we can see the completed board with the fuse sockets in place. I've removed the fuses from the top three positions just so you can see the, the sockets soldered in place and uh, the bottom three have got the fuses still in place. The kit comes with three 25 amp and three 5 amp fuses but these are just automotive fuses. You can go to any automotive shop and uh, buy whatever selection of fuses you require. Okay, the next thing to do is to fit the Anderson power poles. These come as separate parts, so we have the red covers, the black covers and the actual metal contacts that clip inside. So the first thing we do is push the metal contacts into each set of connectors and there's a correct orientation. This is clearly demonstrated in pictures in the build instructions. 
the metal inserts pop into place, so you, they click fit. Um, so it's very easy to feel when they're they're inserted correctly. They can be a little bit of a hard push. Um, I held mine with a pair of pliers just to pop them into place. Once you finish inserting the metal contacts into the plastic covers, you can then pair them up into red and black pairs and these slide together. So they kind of clip together so they become a single unit. Now that's all that's left to do is to position these on the circuit board, making sure they're oriented the right way. And it's very clear on the board, you have plus and negative um, symbol on the power pole sockets. Okay, and this didn't take very long. A little bit easier to solder these in place compared to the fuses because the amount of metal um, in the Anderson power pole uh, connection is much less than the, uh, the volume of metal in the fuse socket. So they don't require quite so much heat to solder into place. So that's essentially the board built. It's very quick to do. You do need to be a little bit careful around soldering the resistor. Uh, and the LED, specifically the resistor, because it's quite close to the other contacts. But it's very simple to build up. Um, I now used a multimeter just to check the both the resistance of the joints and also that I had connectivity, um, very low impedance or low resistance connectivity uh, where I needed it, and very high resistance where things shouldn't have been soldered together. So just to make sure that um, I didn't have anything shorted and I didn't have any high resistance contacts. Okay, so the PCB is going to actually connect to the lid. Um, and Richard uses the little nylon standoffs to, uh, to achieve that. Now be very careful screwing these together. Um, each nylon standoff has a, a nut to screw underneath the circuit board and then it'll have a little nylon screw to pass through the lid to, uh, to screw into that to, to hold the whole thing in place. Um, the nylon screws and nuts um, can strip very easily if you're not used to using them. Just tighten them finger tight. Uh, if you do use um, a little spanner or a little pair of pliers, be very, very careful. It's very easy to strip them. As I said, the front panel is laser cut, so it looks really professional, very nicely uh, uh, cut out. And all of the decals, all of the writing on the front of the unit is laser etched. Um, so it looks really nice, a really professional finish. So all that remained for me to do was to finish screwing the uh, PCB to the lid using the little nylon, uh, nine nylon screws, and then just drop the lid into place in the top of the box and the whole thing sits inside beautifully. Finally, a quick check to make sure my LED is working correctly to indicate the polarity of the power attached. Now, if you're using Anderson power poles, you pretty much can't go wrong. But if you were feeding this from a power supply, which had Anderson power poles on the uh, end of the power lead. Um, you could, I guess, connect that up the wrong way round. Or indeed, if you modified this and fed the PCB um, with a pair of wires and um, f uh, drilled a hole in the bottom of the box and fed them out to, to a power supply, uh, I guess it's possible to go wrong. But typically the great thing with power poles is it stops you from making those silly mistakes. Anyway, I applied the power and as you can see I've got a lovely green light to indicate that I've uh, applied the power correctly. This is 13.8 volts applied and I get a nice green lamp to tell me green is good. Just to wrap up I reverse the polarity just to see what happened and clearly you can see I get a nice red light indicating that something's wrong. The green light's also very handy in operation because you can see that the unit is powered up. So if you're in the habit of shutting down all your power at the end of the evening to make sure uh, nothing is left running, it gives you a nice uh, visual indication that power is applied to the distribution unit. Okay, so in summary, the Soto Beams Fuser 6 power pole distribution unit, lovely simple build for both novices and more experienced builders alike. You are going to need a hotter iron, so 50 watts plus, uh, to be able to solder those fuse connections and the power pole connections to the board. Um, I'm a real fan of the phone pole, the smaller distribution unit, but it is really nice to have a souped up version for the shack uh, with more outputs, 
higher power handling, the fuse protection, and of course the um, power and reverse polarity indicator. Uh, it's small enough to tuck away um, out of sight in the uh, behind the radios, but also you can easily fix it to a wall and use it as a, a fixed power distribution system in your shack. Nicely engineered, uh, laser cut front panel and laser etch front panel, physically nice and strong, um, really nicely made. For me, highly recommended. I hope to get years of great service out of this. I hope you found the video useful. Uh, whether you're just thinking about buying one of the SOTA Beam's power pole systems um, or whether you're just to, you've bought one and you're just about to start building, um, I hope this video gives you some, some insight into it. 73's from me and remember guys, enjoy your radio.